is sickening to hear. Whether you're reading it from the Post or the Times, according to these rankings, what makes each shooting quote unquote worse is the number of wounds and fatalities inflicted. I am sick and tired of hearing that a certain shooting wasn't so bad because one less person was killed. Yeah. A single shot has the power to completely instill fear in whole communities, evoking finger pointing, scapegoating, discrimination, and ultimately snowballing into our already anxious atmosphere. We live in our self-proclaimed greatest country in the world. Yet American gun violence stemming from the glorification of weapons used by the military has justified the delivery of these deadly devices into our neighborhoods, onto our doorsteps. Bump stocks and high capacity magazines make it easy to shoot us down by the second. Semi-automatic and assault rifles make warlike conditions easily accessible. I am simply afraid of the fact that ordinary Americans can acquire assault weapons. When it comes to lethal weapons, objects that are capable of taking the lives of our students, teachers, black people, poor people, cinema goers, incoming college freshmen, pastors, leaders, families, sisters, brothers, children. When it comes to an object that is capable of destroying whole communities with a single shot, we are utterly in the wrong if we have not been demanding common sense this entire time. Yeah. We will hear these victims' names. We will know that their lives were taken because our elected officials refuse to take action, far more persuaded by NRA donations to their campaigns than the lives of our fallen future generations and their broken families, unwilling to do what is right for personal gain. In fact, just before Parkland, the Kansas House of Representatives voted on an overwhelming majority to lower the age of concealed carry on campus to 18 when Parkland's own shooter was 19. Today is about organizing as a unified front. That it took so long for this country to mass organize our demands for change is strikingly disappointing. Where were we when nine black churchgoers were massacred by white supremacists and gun-toting terrorists Dylan Roof? Where were we? Where were we when reports came out that gun violence disproportionately kills black people, poor people, and Hispanics? Where was our outrage? Kansas City, we are gathered here today because unfortunately, Parkland was your tipping point. It should not have taken the 28 teachers and children in Sandy Hook. It should not have taken the 7,000 plus children who died of gun violence after Sandy Hook. We have been quiet for too damn long. It is time to close the loophole and background checks. It is time to take the weapons out of domestic abusers and those on the federal no-fly list. Not putting bulletproof white hordes in the hands of our six, seven, and eight-year-olds. Not building thousands of gun-safe shelters in the middle of classrooms, teaching our children instead to fear any instant that could rob them of their lives. Regulation should not begin where the bullets stop because by then it is far too late. I am 16 years old and as of today, turning 17 in less than three weeks. Since my birth, there have been over 204 school shootings. That is more than one for every month I have been alive. <sighs> Students my age should never again have to be near lethal weapons, never again have to fear their trade and with illegally within their communities, never again have to fear that a lethal weapon will fall into the hands of another Eric Harris, yeah. Adam Lanza, Dylan Roof, or Nicholas Cruz. We should be worried about annual fitness tests, finding a date to the prom, learning to drive, starting our common apps. But the dire state of this nation has left us no choice but to rise up in the deafening silence and inaction of our politicians. We will be voting in the midterm elections. We will be voting in 2020. We are the future, and the future demands a change now.